Um, what's up, John Stokes? What do you disagree about? Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay, so I actually used to be an outspoken atheist, and I tried to disprove Christianity, but because of what I found, I became a Christian. Um, I'm interested in the first statement where you say God does not exist. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious. How did you come to that conclusion? Yeah, I think, well, let's just give three reasons. Um, I think the, the classical sense of theism or traditional theism is incompatible with the possibility of evil, even or the existence of both. Um, I think also that for every mind that I come across or come to know, there's been a body. And so it's unlikely that there are any minds without bodies and under people, uh, God is a, a mind without a body. And I think that even if God could exist, um, God wasn't impossible given the problem of evil or something like that. Uh, God doesn't generate any predictions about how the world should look like or how we should observe the world as to confirm his existence. So those are broadly three reasons why I think it's reasonable to be an atheist. Okay, so, and I, you can correct me if I'm wrong at any point, because I don't want to misrepresent, like, your beliefs or anything. Um, so, you're, you were complaining about um, the problem of evil, kind of like a flaw that, like, God couldn't, like, we couldn't be designed by a loving creator or something, or, or by God, like, because of, of, like, the evil. Was that one of the things that you said? Well, I didn't actually give the argument. I, I just made a claim that... I, I think that given the triomni properties of God, uh, it would entail that evil is not possible. Um, but I didn't actually give the argument. But yeah, that's one of the big reasons why I remain an atheist. Yeah. Okay. So do you think it's logically impossible for there to be morally sufficient reasons for God to allow um, this evil that you're talking about? Because that. In order to draw that conclusion from that from that argument, you'd have to say that it's logically impossible for God to have morally sufficient reasons to permit certain evil or suffering. Perhaps by him doing that, the greatest amount of people are going to go to heaven on free will. And so as long as that's logically possible for him to have a morally sufficient reason for doing that, then that's not an argument saying that uh, because if there's evil, there cannot be a loving God as long as there is logically possible, morally sufficient reasons. Yeah, if there's morally sufficient reason for something to happen, that means it should occur, right? If you have a morally sufficient reason to do X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z is good or permissible. Um, but what evil is, um, at least the sense of evil that the relevance is evil is something that ought not to occur, all things considered. So if God has a morally sufficient re uh, reason for allowing an event, then that event ought to occur given the morally sufficient reason he has. But uh, what evil is, is that which ought not to happen. Right? So um, to say that evil is explained by God's morally sufficient reasons for allowing it, it's just to deny that there's evil, all things considered, or that there are things that occur that all things considered should not happen. I I think I'm I think I'm following, but like when I'm what I so like basically like what ought to or what should or like what we think should or ought to is kind of irrelevant to and this was whenever I was like investigating myself, that regardless of like my opinions about what's evil or wrong, or if I think something's flawed, has no implication on whether or not we're designed because something could be flawed right like and it still be designed so like cars they're they're flawed they don't last forever phones they're flawed they don't last forever but they're still designed so just because that morality is evil or something like that or you have a problem with the design of of the way that morality works that doesn't mean that it wasn't designed and so that's kind of like where i'm a little appalled and i think you will change your your mind by the end of this uh um, appalled that you say that God does not exist because how can you use the natural to disprove the supernatural? You cannot say that God does not exist 
And you cannot say that because of a lack of evidence, God does not exist, because that's actually a logical fallacy in and of itself to say that lack of evidence is proof something doesn't exist. So you yeah. really cannot say that God does not exist because you, everyone is unable to using the natural. Yeah, but I, I never gave that argument. Um, well, never, so it's, it's the first thing that's written up top. God does not exist. Yes, but I never gave the argument that uh, something about evidence. I don't even think I said the word evidence. Um, the, the point is, is that the logical problem of evil is try, attempting to demonstrate a conceptual flaw in the model of God that is triomni. Right? Um, it's not like I'm not it's not appealing to empirical evidence. Right. Yeah, so I think I'm still because on the God does not exist statement, yeah. like are you do you hold to that? Yes. So how can you say that God does not exist? If okay. if we've okay. already gone over on the morality that it is logically possible. For, for God to have morally sufficient reasons. But to you remember my response to that. Right. Well, I'm saying since it's logically possible, regardless of what you think ought, uh, yeah. should or should not I be, said, it, then you cannot say that God does not exist because... I, I think these things shouldn't happen. That never came out of my mouth. What I said was, um, God believes, or it's all things considered, there are events that ought not to occur. That's all I need to get the argument running. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters that, all things considered, there are things that occur in human history that ought not to occur, independent of what I believe. Well, then you would be appealing to moral objectivity. I'd be, I'd be appealing to the model of good and evil that theists use. Well, if you said that it's outside of yourself, right? Because I... I agree with you and this is one of the questions that honestly i think morality was one of the biggest turn points in, in me i see that you said something about philosophy and religion i love philosophy maybe we can dive into that at some point or like we i'll follow you if you're interested in having like some deep dialogues at some point because i genuinely love like talking to you and um like listening to how you think and i i don't want to ever come across as rude or disrespectful because no, you're fine i you're literally fine. used to <laughs> i literally used to debate christians all the time and like Anyway, now I'm like doing the exact opposite. It's kind of funny. I'm going to be doing it for a living. Um, cool. But uh, whenever like you're complaining about, and this is one thing. So I used to say, how can a loving God allow babies to have cancer? Like, how can there be this, this, uh, like, uh, well, this me, evil that's going it. on? It would be I'm, easier. I'm sorry, go ahead. It'd be easier if I just gave you the argument because I haven't given the argument yet. Okay. Uh, the argument goes something like this. Uh, God is all good, and what that means is that God never wills something he ought not will, or he should not will. Do we agree? If, if God is all good, if God is good, that means that he what? He only wills what he should will. He never, God, if God is all good, he can't will something he should not will, or he can't will something that should not occur. Um, I wouldn't say that I concede to that because who's, who's the one to say like what should or should not. God, let's just say from God's will. Okay. So yeah, I'm trying to follow. So, um, you're saying from God's perspective. Yep. Do you know God's perspective? I know that, uh, wh wh about what exactly? Because in God's response to Job, he literally said, to him that where were you when I created the foundations of the world? You can't understand because you don't have a broad enough perspective. So like whenever you're saying like God's perspective, you and I, I don't know how old you are. I'm 23. I've only lived for 23 years. I don't know all things. I can't see everything. And so God says, because you can't see all that, you, you cannot like judge on like what I'm doing or what I'm permitting. So yeah. whenever I'm saying like on what God uh, should or should not say, that, like we can't, we, from our limited perspective, can say God like believe, can god believe that he made a mistake can god believe that he made a mistake yeah uh i i think all things are possible yes it, it god actually says that he regrets uh making humans at one point 
Okay. So if you think God can make mistakes, then that would imply that God can believe that. Well, I didn't say, I didn't necessarily, it was a mistake, but that he can regret doing something, but not that it's a mistake. Okay. Wait, true or false? Because God. according, to, because according to God, it's all a part of a plan. So even though he said that he regret regretted making humans, that he already predestined all this stuff. So like, if we're going back and forth on like, can God make a mistake? Technically, no, because he he already planned that in advance. But sure. can he okay. regret We're, something? We agree, right? We agree. God can't make mistakes. God can't look back at what he wills or forward at what he wills and think to himself, I ought to have willed differently, right? That's what it means for something to be perfectly good, right? A perfectly good being can't look at his actions and think that, he should have done differently, all things considered. Where is that? Like, why do you, that's just your opinion. Because I think something could be perfectly good and and regret something, but still show us love. Because using, even though he, so like, so, so what I'm saying is that wait, even wait. though like he regretted making us, right? Was, like, I didn't he literally that. loves you so much that you could literally <laughs> say whatever you, it, if I could just finish this and then if you could just, if you could just finish this, hold, uh, if I could just get I'm this thought out. When you misunderstand me, I never oh. used the term regret. Wait, I'm sorry, one more time. I didn't use the term regret. You're using the term regret. I think regret complicates things. I'm trying to make things simple. Can well, no, I, I, I'm i sorry. I was only using regret because that's the word that God, that God's word uses. So that's why I was using regret, not mistake. Yeah, but you, but I'm giving the argument, right? Regret might mean something very different in the con compared to what I'm saying. Right. What I'm saying is that a perfectly good being can't look at his actions and think that he ought to have done differently than what he did. Right. So what I was saying is that who gets to say that? Because that's just your opinion. By definition. So like, so what I was saying is that that uh, uh, to be all good. What does that mean? And who gets to define that? Did because. Look because you were saying that like something can't be all good and x happen why can you say that because how do you because and even if like you think or we think it literally doesn't matter or like it it holds no relevancy to if we were actually designed or not or if there is a god or not or if god does or does not exist the point of an argument is for me to lay out lines of reasoning or premises for you to say i accept or i reject or you don't know right so if you accept that God is all good, right? Then you accept a certain meaning of that. And I offered the meaning, right? When something is perfectly your, good- Your opinion, what you think it means. Okay. Because I don't think that that's what, what it means, by the way. What does it mean to say then, do you think God is omnibenevolent? Yes. Okay, what does that mean? If you're rejecting my characterization of omnibenevolence, then what do you mean when you say God is all good? Um, I think that means that despite our flaws or despite his regret, that he still loves us and he, he died for us despite our mistakes. So that's what I think all good is, is that despite um, it, despite anything that we've done. So like, regardless of what I said to God or regardless of what you say to God right now today, you can say whatever you want. You can say that he's he's a piece of crap. You can say how much you hate him. And literally tomorrow, if you were to turn around, he would accept you with open arms if you wanted to. That's what I think is all good, regardless of like if he regretted doing something or if he's allowed you to talk to him that way. He literally is so loving. So, so that's what I'm talking about. Wait, so then, then by that definition of all goodness, God, it was not all good if there's no creation. Well, if if he is, if that's his character, he can still be all good if that's his character, regardless if you're acting on it. Okay, then what does that mean? Because the point is that you just try to define omnibenevolence in terms of the gospel, perhaps. But the point is, is that most people that believe in God think God is all good, even if he chose not to create, which means that all omnibenevolence does not mean what you meant, what, what you just said. It means something different. So what does it mean to say, what is the definition of omnibenevolence? I offered a perfectly fine definition well, that most I, again. And but I think your definition is more flawed than mine. So like we can what do my, this back and forth. Be? So one more time. What do you think my definition to be? Well, uh -huh. you said that you use the word can't, 
like you can't make a mistake and you can't like here's where I'm saying the can't as long as something's logically possible or for there to be morally sufficient reasons then it is logically possible and can still be all good so all of a sudden and and I think that we're a little bit off the point and like I kind of want to stay on topic um, about God does not we're exist. We're talking about the problem. We're talking so, about the problem. So God, so, so. I'm on, on topic. We're talking so about So I'm the saying evil, like, so the no sec- evil, if you think that God isn't all good, right? Part of so, the problem with evil is first establishing that God is all good. If you don't think God is all good, then there's no problem of evil because God can do evil things. So I do not think God can do evil things. Okay. But. This is, but regardless of what I think, holds no way or like has any impact on like what actually happened. And so that's kind of what I'm saying is, regardless of your opinion or my opinion, if you think something's flawed, if I think something's flawed, it has no relevance to if Jesus not, of Nazareth did raise from the dead or if God not, did or did not create conversation, us. I will not say to you any particular event that um ought not to happen i that's not for me to say the point is is that exactly. the logical yeah. problem occurs if god believes that there are things that all things considered should not happen okay so based upon like everything that we've talked about and i don't want to steal your thunder or anything how can you say that god does not exist which was because i haven't heard anything to permit you to say because of this because of x god does not exist and that was kind of the whole point at the beginning that you actually cannot use the natural to disprove the supernatural yeah i just look i'm telling you when i say god doesn't exist i'm taking god to be all good now you're just giving up on the idea that god is all good right no 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 i'm saying that god is all good and i and i said that he could have morally sufficient reasons for permitting it and i and I already went over that but I was, uh, it could be that the maximum amount of people to freely choose to go to heaven could under these circumstances so i i didn't say that that's why i said that that could be why and as long as that could be why then i was i was saying that that i and i thought i refuted that if you don't think i have then i'll i'll go back over that but i was saying to your point about that it's not logically possible because for there to be an all good God because of the evil. I'm saying that it is logically possible because there could be morally sufficient reasons. Do you and remember, I gave one example of that. But do you remember my response to morally sufficient reasons for allowing evil? Do you remember my response to that? Yes, but it. But all I was saying is that regardless of like your response to that, I'm saying that there is a logically possible. So I'm saying like, I, and I don't think that maybe I'm explaining this right. That's on me. Like, I, my bad. I'm saying that, like, regardless of, like, either of our opinions on if that's right or not, that there is a possibility. So I was saying as long as there's a possibility, then just at not, least, at Andy, most you could be agnostic I'm and not, say it could be possible look, there is a God. John, John, I'm not denying that it's possible, right? I'm telling you the implication of saying that something is more, if you have morally sufficient reasons for doing something, that just makes it good. It makes it something that you something that you ought do, or at least permissible, right? And if that's the case, if God has morally sufficient reasons for allowing certain events, right, then those events ought to occur, all things considered. Hey, by the way, I really appreciate you talking with me. And like, I, I hope that like, I'm not like upsetting you or anything or like, and I do realize that I have been interrupting at some points. And I'm sorry. Like whenever I do that, just like, just yeah. be like, just be like this. And I'll be like, I'm doing it again. That's fine. Um, um, so, but, but this is kind of where I, I asked myself, and this is where I, I moved from the point of saying that God does not exist to agnosticism because I'm saying that you cannot use anything in the natural to disprove the supernatural. Do what? Have I done that? Well, no. Yes. So no, to say I that God does not. Well, here's here's what I'm saying. 
So to say that God does not exist, there is absolutely no way that you can say that because we're in the natural. And all that you could use no, would be the natural to disprove that. Okay, time out. They're philosophical arguments against the existence of God. Philosophical arguments are not scientific ones or empirical arguments. Well, there's also philosophical arguments saying that there is a God. So you yeah, cannot say because there's arguments work. against that he doesn't exist because there are arguments for it. So therefore, you could say that there are arguments against it. Therefore, I'm going to say that I don't believe. But you can't say that he doesn't exist because there's also arguments for him no, philosophically. Four and so you're saying that like the four Sorry, category argument for the existence of God all crumble. They're garbage, in my opinion, right? The arguments for the existence of God all fail, right? And I think atheological arguments like the problem of evil, hiddenness arguments are good arguments, right? And I was, we were trying to go through one, but I, I, I've already looked at the arguments for the existence of God. None of them, none of them work. Um, and uh, sorry. So I was saying, even if every philosophical argument in your opinion, or just in everyone's opinion, if every single philosophical argument failed, you still cannot say that God does not exist because lack of evidence is a logical fallacy to say that la uh, lack of evidence is Have evidence I against something. John, so, like, I'm I saying never, we're, we're, I'm going to... John, I don't know who you're talking to. I have never said, because there's a lack of evidence, that therefore God does not exist. I right, right. I'm saying that that's the, that's, that's, and so, like... Um, I'm trying to show you, like, boil down to the basic principle of, you did not say word for word, because of a lack of evidence, <laughs> I don't believe in God. And I'm not, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. I'm saying um, that you, that you said uh, something to the effect of that I think all these philosophical arguments for God fell. Yes. So therefore, no, uh, I, God does not, you know, no. Ever the made that conclusion, so the conclusion is God does not exist. Yes. This was the evidence that you you provided for it. And I'm saying that you cannot I, use that I, to say I, John, that God I, does not exist. Through a full argument with you. Right. I'm not giving you an argument. We went through one premise or part of an argument. We didn't get through it fully, but I'm not giving you an argument because we haven't gotten the far as far as to finish. An argument, right? Right, the but you first, can't use that uh, premise either because it's a logical fallacy. What premise? What premise are you talking about? The, the premise of one, saying that because these arguments fell, therefore God does not exist. I never you can said say that, that you no, don't I never think. Said that. I never you can say said that you don't. You can say that you that you may believe that there is or is not a God because of lack of evidence, but you cannot say because uh, there's not that. enough evidence that God. Like I'm saying, that. you so. You literally cannot say that God does not exist based upon uh, moral arguments or philosophical arguments against it because it's just a logical fallacy. What's the? I haven't even given an argument. How can you say I'm accuse me of a fallacy? Do you know fallacies apply to arguments, right? It's it's applied to logical uh, reasoning errors. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, no, fallacies apply to lines of reasoning. Arguments are lines of reasoning, so fallacies fallacies apply to argument. Um, to arguments, right? So the point is, is that I have not even given you an argument, right? Okay, we, okay. We started. Could you we, give me, could you give me one argument then for why God does started, not exist? Right. The first premise of the first argument, or a for, or the, the first premise of the logical problem of evil, is I was establishing the triomni properties, right? What it means to say God is all good, all powerful, and all knowing, and that's where we began the discussion. Okay. So I said, what it means for God to be all good is that he only wills good. He only wills things that ought to happen from his perspective. Okay. He never wills something that ought not to occur from his perspective. And you contested that premise for some reason. So in, uh, like my response to that is, so what? Like, okay. so That's what? Premise. So can we, we establish that? Let's go to the second premise. Okay. OK, so we've established you accept the first premise that God only wills what he ought to will from his perspective, all things considered. All right. The second premise is that everything in human history, everything that has occurred, is occurring and will occur, depends on God's creative will. Without God's creative will, nothing in human history would occur. Do we agree to the second premise? Without. Without God's what? Creative will. Nothing in human history would occur. 
So what do you mean that without his creative will? What do you mean by that? If God did not will to create or will to form the everything from the universe to the cells in my body, right? Then nothing in human history would occur. Um I I'm not saying that it couldn't occur. I'm just saying that I don't think that the evidence supports that. Do you believe that um in what is your belief? Is your belief that God created everything? Um, like everything. Yeah. Uh, like so. Uh, so my belief, my belief is um, that the evidence does support that Jesus of Nazareth rose from the dead, and different. therefore about that. I'm asking. Well, I I oh I'm sorry. That's yeah. what that's what I believe. <laughs> does everything um, in creation? at some point, depend on God's desire to create. Does everything depend on that? Yeah, nothing would have, creation would not be without God's will, creative will, correct? I'm, I'm not saying that it's not, uh, so you're, you're asking me, is it impossible for anything to exist without God's creative will? Yeah, especially with respect to the cosmos and us in it. Well, I'm not going to say that it's not possible, but it's not reasonable. I don't have enough faith to believe that. Okay, do you believe that God created everything? In I, I do believe, yes. Okay, so that means that there's a dependency relation between God's will and everything in creation, correct? I, I yeah, okay. Just, I'll just, I'll just keep listening. I, okay. I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on a response to why God does not exist. I'll just, yeah. I'll just well, keep saying yes. I'll just keep we saying have yes. To go through the premises, right? The first premise is God only wills things that should occur. And then the second premise is that everything in creation depends on God's will, given that God created it. Okay. And the third one is that God believes that there are things in human history that ought not to occur, all things considered, right? He thinks that there is evil, all things considered, okay? Uh, he thinks that, for instance, adultery and fornication and um, worshiping idols are evil things that ought not to occur, all things considered, correct? Okay, I'm, I'm oh. still listening. Okay, then now we've got a contradiction. If you've accepted that... God is a good being that only wills things that should occur, all things considered. And everything in human history depends on God's will, given that God created everything. And then if it's the case that God believes that there are things in creation that ought not to occur, all things considered, then a being that only wills things that ought to happen, um, willed something that ought not to happen, all things considered. And there's your contradiction. This God does not exist. So um, I'm going to be honest. I'm pretty appalled with with your reasoning right there. Um, that that's um, with with all due respect. Um, <laughs> you cannot say that God does not exist because of something that you think is a contradiction, and just because something seems to be a contradiction doesn't mean that it necessarily is a contradiction because okay, I could write down wrong so, in my so I could write down an apple is red and I could also write down an apple is green and you could be like oh it's a contradiction you can't be right but maybe I'm writing about one apple that is red wait, and wait, another wait. apple that tell is me green what's wrong it, with my reasoning tell me what's wrong with the reasoning with the argument that I just gave yes yeah, so I just said because you think that something is a contradiction give me what the, did I where I gave you a whole argument, and just tell me where I went wrong in that argument. Don't tell me about some the, other the, argument that you give. Okay, so you cannot, from your contradiction, say that because I think, and again, it is just an opinion, because you think that something cannot logically follow, or that there's a contradiction, that therefore... God does not exist because it's just your opinion. And where, you, where in the argument did I go wrong? Do you reject any of the three premises? I I I disagree with the conclusion. I'm not okay, saying that I you can't that. say that some 
asking about the conclusion. I'm asking about the premise. Yes, yes. I'm saying that you cannot say God does not exist because of that. Okay, tell me what premise you're rejecting. The conclusion. That's not a premise. A conclusion. No, 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 no. no. I, I didn't say that I rejected a premise. I said I rejected the conclusion based upon the premises. Do you know what a sound argument is? I'd like to say I've heard some before. Yes, that's not okay. one of them. Argument, <laughs> not even close to being one of them. Yeah. Do you know what? A, tell me what a sound argument is. Um. So, all these circumstantial evidence points to Jesus of Nazareth being. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just asked me. See, this is what I'm saying. You asked me a question. Can I just? Can I just no, finish? You you're answering the wrong question. I'm not asking you for an example. You, you said give give you a sound argument. I, no, no, you... I didn't ask that. I didn't ask that. You're not listening. I'm asking for you the did ask that. By the way, the definition of a sound argument. The, okay, you did not ask for the definition. You said, "Do you know what a sound argument is?" Yes, that's asking. I'm asking for the definition. What is the definition of a sound argument? Um, I do not know Webster's Dictionary definition for a sound argument. Okay, give me your de your definition. Don't give me Webster's. Give me your definition of a sound argument. Um, I would say one that doesn't break uh, logical fallacies. A sound argument is an argument where the premises are true and the um, and the form of the argument is valid. Okay. Uh, okay. Who has ever said that that's a sound argument? Um, uh, almost every single logician, Christian and non-Christian alike. I've never heard anyone say that, by the way. Well, then, have you ever taken a logic class? Yes. Okay, then you should have learned what validity and soundness is. And again, regardless of if I did take a... So this is what I'm saying. Regardless of, of understanding what a sound argument is or anything like that would be irrelevant to the subject matter at hand. No, because you can't identify what premise so, you're rejecting, nor can you show how the argument is not valid. Right. So I'm saying that let's just say for like everything that, that's going on would be instead of attacking the argument, you're attacking my understanding of what a sound argument is. Yeah, because so if, if you knew what a sound argument was, then you would know how to start replying to my argument because you don't. Well, attack. I would say that if you knew what a sound argument is, that you would understand how to make a sound argument. So I'm saying, like, we're just going back and forth. Everything you've said has... So I have, hear, I, I have yet to hear... I have yet to hear... I have yet to hear anything from you that substantiates your conclusion that God does not exist. Yeah, because the reason why you can't tell that or even begin to respond to my argument is because you don't know what a sound argument is in the first place. I did respond to your argument. No, you were you just dis disagreed with the um, conclusion, but you didn't tell me what premise you rejected. Well, so, but I did respond to it. You just didn't like my response. But prim if you responded to my argument, then what premise are you disputing? Again, I'm saying here. I'll, I'll just go ahead and say every single premise that you gave does not constitute a contradiction. Uh, uh, the premises themselves are not contradictory. What's contradictory is when you affirm all those premises. But I don't affirm any of those premises. Look, here are the premises again, and you stopped me. Well, when I, you... I did, but I already told you that I don't concede any of that. Okay, so you don't think God is all good? Okay, I did say that I do think God is all good, but not what your definition of all good is. And we're just going to keep what going. Was my definition? This is where, this is where I'm saying that this is unfruitful. Okay. Because we're just and with all due respect, I do think, um, that regardless of what I say that you do have your mind made up. Okay. If you're not interested in discussing, um, I'll go. To well, I'm, I'm interested in discussing. I I'm just saying that like every single time I respond, you're saying, Oh, you don't know what a sound argument is. Therefore, that's why you can't understand this. I'm saying that that's an ad hominem. Like every single response has been no, and, no, no. Like how does it? What does that have to do with my response? The point is that if I get there's a question about whether I gave a sound argument or not. There's you don't know if, you, but if you don't know what a sound argument is, 
How can you say that I did not give a sound argument? Okay. I said that because of a logical fallacy, and I said that if something commits that, then it's not a sound argument. So, and that is what I said. Argument is. Do what? You, you didn't even know what a sound argument is. In fact, if I asked you right now, what is a sound argument or what constitutes validity, you probably don't know. You don't know how to respond to arguments. Again, that's an ad hominem that is unrelated to the subject. You're saying that you're, you're appealing to, to me and like my understanding of something to say, oh, because you can't comprehend this. Therefore, your response is not valid. And instead of talking about the actual response that you cannot conclude that God does not exist. Look, you're just not understanding. Let me go over this again. Well, I, I'm if, saying that you're not understanding. If I gave a sound argument, that means that the conclusion is true. Okay. Okay. So, so it's, up to that you. Is, it's up to you. It means it could be true. Whether it's sound or not. But if you don't even know what a sound argument is in the first place. No, 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 no. So that right there, that right there, you can give a sound argument. That does not mean that it's true. You literally said, if no, I the, give a sound that, argument, that, that means it's true. That does not mean it's true at all. One in second. fact, sound arguments are proven this, wrong this all the time. This is where your ignorance is shining, right? You just said that you can give a sound argument, but the conclusion is not true, right? Do you said that? That is nonsense. Sound arguments guarantee the truth of their conclusion because what the sound argument is, is two things. The sound argument is all the premises are true, okay? And if it's valid, that means that the conclusion, the truth um, value of the conclusion is guaranteed by the way that the form or the way that we set up the premises, right? So if the premises are true, that means that, and if it's valid, you get a guaranteed true conclusion. So that, what you just said there, demonstrates that you don't know what a sound argument is. No, no, no. See, you said that if you give a sound argument, then therefore it is true. And that's, yes. that's not true. Yes, no, 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 no. You can give a sound argument given the facts that you have, but let's say that there are new facts yet to be discovered. And this is what happens in science all the time, right? People back years ago would give sound arguments. Look, you but don't know what when new evidence. Pause, please. Just let me finish. When new evidence is discovered, all of a sudden, the conclusion from that sound argument at the time is no longer valid. So, just because something is a "quote unquote" sound argument does not mean that it's a factor that it's true. And, which is exactly what you're saying. And again, everything that, like I'm saying, anyway, the, it, it's pretty. It's pretty clear and evident. No, 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 no. Do you think sound arguments apply to empirical claims or evidence? Sure. No. This is this is your demonstration that you don't know what you're no, talking no, about. No, 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 no. So you can use empirical evidence to make a sound argument. That's true. Okay. Well, you said, does it apply? That was not so my I question. Was saying, okay, then I just misunderstood your question then. Because I'm the saying you can use it to make a sound argument. Sound arguments, right, are deductive, not inductive, and don't rely on empirical evidence for the guarantee of the truth of the conclusion. They rely on the meanings of terms and the way that the premises are ordered, okay? It does not depend on induction, does not depend on observation, okay? So here's the argument that I get. Let's just get to the argument, right? Um, rather than doing a logic lesson. And I, I forgive me for trying to do that. But the point is this, that if God is all good, okay, if God is all good, he only wills the good. He only wills what he should will. We agree on that, right? So, but I, I'm saying that uh, he doesn't necessarily, like, I'm saying that that's not necessarily true. Okay, then it seems like you're just rejecting that God is all good in the normal. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm disagreeing. Okay, I'm going to make this as clear as I can. Okay, just because I disagree with your definition of what all good means does not mean that I'm disagreeing that God is good. Do you understand what I just said? No, because you said earlier that God. Okay, what, evil. what did I say that did not make like what did I say? that does not make sense if you're because 
you because just, you're doing a really nice job of taking my words and saying it in a way that I didn't mean. Because I literally keep repeating. You're like, no, you did. And I'm literally saying, if you're not understanding, I'll keep repeating it. But that is not. I disagree with what you're saying. All good means. I'm, okay. I say that God by, is all good. I, you're all defining good. all good. And I'm not agreeing with that. It, it is that simple. Is Earlier you said that God can't do evil, which means that God only wills the good. Correct? I am disagreeing with what you're saying. I don't think can that God, means all good. Can God do evil? No, God cannot do evil. That means he's all good. Do you understand the entailment? That well, I'm, I'm not saying God because something can... can, can you, the entailment of God can't do evil means that God only does the good, can only do the good. That is what everyone means. Literally everyone means by omnibenevolence. Correct? Okay. You cannot say literally everyone means that because when I use that, I don't I don't mean that. Every single um, philosophy teacher I've had, every single Bible teacher I've had, every single Bible scholar I've watched, listened to, has never used benevolence to mean that. You, you, you're telling me that Christian philosophers and theologians think that um, being all good doesn't mean that God can't do evil? That's what you're telling me? No, I'm saying that God can't do evil, but I'm saying that that's not the definition of all good. That is that is like exactly what's implied. If God can't do evil, there's nothing that God does that is evil. And if nothing that God does is evil, then that means that all of God's actions are good. All, all, all of God's actions are good. All good. Okay. Okay. So why why are you where are you getting this from that people don't what they obviously it's implied that if you can only do the good, then you're all good. If you can do evil and good, you're not all good. And you're not all evil either. If you just do evil, you're all evil. Do we agree now? If you're doing evil, then you're all evil. No, no. Uh, we can no, 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 no. All evil means every action that you do is evil. Okay, but what, like, so what? What does this have to do with God not existing? Well, first of all, it shows that you've actually accepted what I meant by all good all this time, but you've been pushing back for some reason, right? And and second of all, if you think that God is all good and that all of his actions are good, that means God only wills the good, which means that God only wills things that ought to happen or should happen, all things considered. And that is the first premise of the logical problem of evil. God is all good. That's the implications. Do we agree? Are you tired of John? <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you going to respond? I think I'm tired of myself too. Uh, I was, I'm sorry. I was, I don't want to, I was reading that. Just, if you're not interested in the argument, you can just wait, let the next person go. No, 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 no. I have been, incredibly interested in having a discussion i've just been um a little frustrated with with i i think the lack of of listening to what i'm saying instead of repeating what i've said in a way that i didn't say it so like just like whenever i was saying that god does not exist I explain to you a very here basic here, here all i'm saying here basic, go ahead. there has been there has been nothing said to prove that God does not exist. We That's have literally the, that, that far. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let someone else go. Basic, basic I'll let, definition of all goodness. I'll right? let Look, someone let, else go. Let me, let me just tell you what's going on here, right? We have not been able to progress because you're contesting one of the most basic definitions of omnibenevolence that I can provide. You're, you're pushing back on things that all other Christians and theists that I've talked to don't push back on. Most every Christian I talk to says, yes, God is all good. He only does good things. He only does things that he should do. And then you're the only Christian that I've met in the last few months that have said, no, God is all good, but that doesn't mean that God only wills things that are good, right? You're the only one that has done that to me. And that's why we have not gotten anywhere. Okay, would there have been some people in the comments that are saying that they agree with me? 
Oh, oh, okay. Well, congratulations. What does that get you? Well, you just said that no one, no one can say that all good means something different than what you defined. But I, I'm saying that regardless of like, if you say that, that okay. I will literally just listen, okay? And I'm sorry for everyone that thinks that I'm deflecting because I saw that. I, I'm literally Don't just going to listen. Don't worry about chat. Half of chat hates me. Half of chat hates you. It doesn't matter, right? Okay? It's always – it's when there's a debate or a, ver, a, a, um, a competition, you're always going to get something like that. So ignore chat. Just either go on – leave or uh, if you want to leave or you can talk, we can have the debate. It's up to okay, you. Okay. I would love to keep talking with you. So, okay. Okay, okay let's do that then. Okay. okay. So, the per okay, so let's progress. We think that right. do you believe that God is all good in the sense that God only wills things that are good? Uh the, yes. I'll 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 concede that since God is all good, that everything he would will would be good. With okay. all due respect, I don't want you to grant that to me. The point is is that if you believe that God can't do evil, that means that God can only do the good, correct? Yes. Okay. And if God can yeah. only do the good, that, that means that everything that he wills is good, correct? Yes. Okay. So God only wills the good, which means that God only wills things that should occur, all things considered. So you don't have to grant me this. You actually have to believe it, given your commitment that God can't do evil. Okay. Okay, good. All right. And okay, the second thing we and the second thing that I brought up was um God everything in creation depends on God's creative will. Because you believe that God created everything, right? And that for human history to occur, everything must exist. So all of human history ultimately depends on God's creative will. Now we didn't talk about that as much as the the omnibenevolence, so I'm fine with discussing that a little bit more if you want me to elaborate. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm following, I'm following. Okay, so that means that if everything in human history depends on God's creative will, this is where it gets tricky. God believes that there are things in human history that should not occur considering everything. Do we agree? God, so you were saying that there's things that, and I, I'm just trying to understand. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying that, because I don't want to happen what happened last time. And I, I genuinely was not trying to, um, like, cause issues. Um, Fine. You're, look, man, I'm, I appreciate you on here. Believe I'm, I, I, I might sound frustrated and animated, but don't take it to heart, okay? I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're talking. Go ahead. Okay, yes. I, I'm, uh, I'm following that. That um that there's stuff that goes on in the world that God does not that you said that God does not approve of that there are things in the world that God believes should not occur all things considered uh, right? when people worship idol let me just give you an example I don't have to believe this I'm just asking I'm yeah still, yeah 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 I got you I got you all right okay so now we have now from these three separate lines of reasoning we get a contradiction okay now i'm going to try to show the contradiction remember the first argument or the first right. line is god only wills the good the second idea is that everything that occurs depends on god's will the third category of reasoning is that god believes that some things that have occurred in human history ought not to happen get all things considered right. so with all of this we can say this statement a, be, a God who only wills good wills things that are evil. Right. That gets a contradiction, right? From there, we can derive that God who only wills good does not will good. And there, there's your P and not P. That's the problem. If I can find this in my notes, uh, let's see. Because I, I literally have, 
I don't want to do it like just off my head and uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, okay. Here, that, I can't find it in my notes. Uh, just skimming through it. So, um. So notes in terms of what I said, or notes about something else. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly what you said. Okay. So. So, and if I may, uh, there are three possibilities. If there is an all good God of a world that he could create. Okay. He could create a world in which everyone did good. They couldn't do bad. But they would be forced to do something that they didn't want to do, and that would make God a tyrant. Okay, the second so option, well, if I could just finish the three things, and then, and then I'll, I'll listen. Yeah, no the, second, the second thing is that God could create a world in which people can do whatever they want, but not punish people for doing evil. But that would make God not just, not being good if he didn't punish school shooters, right? We would have a problem with God not being just. The third option that God could, uh, could create is allow us to have free will and punish those who do bad, which is the option, thankfully, that God did choose because he is just and he is punishing those who did wrong and he's not forcing us to do anything. So. There is no contradiction in it. It's actually the only, um, the only possibility, and that's the exact one that that we that we live in today, according to the Bible. Okay, so I'm confused about what you're objecting to. What do you? What in my premises are you objecting to? Yeah. So I. So I was saying based upon, because, and, um, I, I went ahead and I think pre-concluded your conclusion. Um, whenever you were talking about certain things being willed, like these evil going bad, I'm saying that God is one day going to punish that. And so I was saying that it actually giving the only three possibilities that an all good God could make that given the third option, the one that we are in, that if there is moral evil, that he is going to punish that. And that he's not a tyrant by allowing us this free will, and that he's also just because he's not letting punishment go unpunished. Okay, look, I'm just again think about the three categories of our arguments, right? The good, all being God, God being all good, creation being dependent on God's will, and God believing that uh, there are certain events that ought not to occur. What your three responses is responding to? Which of those three separate arguments? Oh, oh, that um, that God has willed good, even though that there's evil going on. I don't remember saying something like that. Could you remember what I what I said is God is all good, which means that He only wills the good. He can't will evil. He only wills what should occur. You don't dispute that, right? That that God wills only good should occur. God only wills things that are good. Only right. will. Okay. And and I was saying that the evil oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm trying to understand no. your objection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Um and I can go over the three yeah. again if oh, what you're shooting at. Yeah, so I can go over the three again if you want, but I'm saying that it actually is good that God has permitted the third option in which there is evil that is allowed to take place, that we're allowed to to have free will, that we're not being forced to do stuff we don't want to do. And he's also punishing that. Because that would make him unjust if he didn't punish it, and that would also make him a tyrant if he didn't allow it and we were forced to do stuff that we don't want to do. Okay, it seems like you're contesting that uh, God believes that there are things in human history that should not occur. Is that what you're contesting? Yes. Okay, so God, if, if evil is that which should not occur, if you don't believe God believes that there are things that should not occur, then God doesn't believe that there's any evil. That's what you're saying? Uh, no, no, that's not what I was saying. I, I was saying that, uh, that there can be evil, right, that's in this world, and it still be, a, like, in God's goodwill to not be a tyrant and to also be just and punish those who choose to do wrong. But I'm not saying it. Look, do you believe that 
God, uh, does God believe that there are things that occur that should not occur? Yes. Okay. And that which should not occur is defined as evil. Evil is that which should not happen, correct? Yes, sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily my definition of what evil is. Um, but, but sure, evil is something that should not, that I don't think should occur. Okay. But, but I actually do think, but I actually do think it should occur um, in another, and this is where I was saying that, that actually um, God wouldn't be good if we weren't allowed to have free will. Because whenever I was saying if God didn't, so like, right, if everyone are follow, if you can follow my train of thought for a second, because I'm, I'm, you said that it seemed like I was shooting over, I, I want to make this point clear. If everyone were to follow God's word, right, the world would look totally different. There'd be no um, uh, rape. There'd be no need for prisons. There'd be no need for police officers. There'd be no need for any of this different stuff. There'd be no lying, cheating, and stealing going on. There'd be a totally different world. But if everyone was forced to do that, then that wouldn't be right on God because he'd be making people do something they wouldn't want to do. So I'm saying God is good by by allowing people to do what they want, but he's He's also just, and he, the only way he can be just is by actually punishing that evil. Because if he doesn't, if he, if he doesn't punish that evil, that would make him unjust. Just like if there's, um, like, you know what happened in Texas. I'm trying not to say words to, to yeah. trigger anything. Um, I think, you know, what happened in Texas, like not that long ago. With, yeah. With those I don't think any of this is relevant to the argument, but I'm fine with changing subjects. If you want to talk about free will and got, you know, another type of set of issues, I'm fine with that. Yeah. So no, um, I'm not trying to change, change subjects. I'm trying to respond to, um, the fact I, I was trying to respond to you about like God only willing stuff. That's good. And I was saying that there being evil is actually good. Evil is actually good. That there's the possibility, and uh, yes, I'm. Tr I'm um, that seems contradictory to me. So, so and it it may seem, but um, I'll, I'll try and I, I'll really try and explain this. Um, so the three options are: God can make everyone do good only, right, where everyone's all good. But if He were to do that. If everyone was only allowed to do good stuff, stuff that's in his word, then God would be a tyrant and be forcing to have people do oh, that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I really think that this is that this is gonna make sense. That they that God would not be good because he would be a tyrant forcing people to do something they don't want to do. Look the second I, I the second saying, But what's happening is that you're sticking to a script, right? probably from William Lane Craig or Frank Turek or something like that. And you're using that script to respond to my argument, but that script is for a different line of argument. So, so, um, it's actually by CS Lewis is one of those people. I love CS Lewis. I love William Lane Craig. I love Dr. Frank Turek. Those are several of the people whenever I was an atheist trying to disprove Christianity. Um, I was actually, doing research on to decide this. I was also looking at Christopher Hitchens, uh, Richard Dawkins, um, uh, Bart Ehrman, different, these different people. And so I do think that it is a sound argument and I am using it, but regardless of where or who came up with that argument, right? It, it doesn't. Gave, I came up with it. I didn't get it from anywhere. I mean, the it's in the spirit of people like J L Mackey and, um, other, you know, William Rowe and these people that forward the problem of evil. But I made the this argument, right? Um, and I think a lot of people would, um, like, you're not going to find this in a, in a paper exactly formed this way, but of course it's inspired by people like Mackey. But I'm just saying that the script that you have, the response that you have, is for a different formulation of the problem of evil. Because all I'm saying is that if God wills all of what happens in creation and God only wills the good, right? Then that means that everything in creation, everything that occurs, right, is good. But God believes that there are things in creation that are not good. And so you get a contradiction, right? This doesn't have to do with 
free will. And if it does, you're going to have to show me what premise yeah. that I just said is relevant to the issue of freedom. Yeah. So I'm saying that if God did not allow there to be the possibility of evil, then God would not be good. Okay. Well, is, okay, let's just do the free will thing. Fine. Let's say you got me. Okay, free will. Do you think that having free will, okay, means that you can possibly do evil? Yes. Okay. So just to be clear, free will means you have to at least have the option to do evil, correct? Correct. Does God have free will? Uh, it's not the same as our free will now. Now, how is this not special pleading? So, so I'm not the same as God. I'm not by, by nature all good. God, like, okay, I can lie. God says that he cannot lie. Is God a robot? No. Okay, that means that you don't have to have human free will to, be, to not be a robot. Well, I'm not saying human free will. I'm free will would be would be able to do whatever you please. Um, and I'm saying that God thankfully does not do whatever he pleases. He does stuff in the constructs of who he says he is, which would be slow to anger, uh loving, uh faithful. So if he, he can't do something that's not faithful, can't do something that's not loving, can't do something that's not um, all these different things. And I was saying that God actually wouldn't be uh, loving or good or any of these different things if he didn't allow there to be free will and also punish those Look, who, who... The point is, is that God has a type of free will where anything he chooses is morally permissible, correct? Uh, I, I don't think so, no. Okay. So that means that God has a type of free will where he can choose something that's morally impermissible. No, so he can't do something that's against his character. Like I'm just, he, he literally cannot do something that's against his character. Well, let's clarify. Do you think God is moral or just amoral? Morality doesn't even apply to God. <laughs> I think God is good. I wouldn't say God is moral because there's so many different definitions of that I would say God is good. Is there any sense that you understand where we can say God is morally perfect? Any sense of moral? Um, it depends on whose definition of morally perfect, because everyone has slight difference in morals. Yeah, I understand that. But look, if, if, you, if your pastor gave you a true or false quiz, and the first question is, number one, God is morally perfect, would you put true False or not answered? I would say yes. Okay. So I would God, say that. Okay. Now, you can be morally perfect and have free will because you think that God is morally perfect and he also has free will. So there's no contradiction in having been morally perfect and also, which is to say that you always do the good, morally good thing and having free will. So I'm saying that that uh, to be morally good, you would have to create free will, but you wouldn't have to necess necessarily have the same free will to be morally good. What does free will simpliciter mean? You, well, by simpliciter, I'm not asking what demon free will is, angel free will is, God free will, human free will, um, beavers free will. I just want to know your definition of free will will simply yeah so free will is the ability to do whatever you want and but but i guess there would be some constraints so it, i i'm kind of fine with that definition okay that means i don't have the ability to do whatever i want to do because sometimes i want to fly so i don't have free will i i would say and this is where, as soon as I said it, I knew, I, I knew, I literally knew as soon as I defined it that way. I, that's why I tried to con catch myself. Um, so just because we cannot fly, right, does not mean 
that we don't have natural free will. So what, what I mean by this is that all of us are natural. So we cannot do something supernatural, even though we may want to do that, because we're, we are only natural. Sorry, what was your definition of free will simpliciter? So I'm saying that, and again, I guess I'm saying free will, I have the ability to, to choose what I want to do. Well, and that the definition but but that doesn't mean that i can do it so so like i if you want so here's what here so it still applies because okay you're saying i want to be able to fly well you can in an airplane it doesn't mean that you can grow wings and do it my but, desire, i want to fly no, no 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 i i'm saying i'm saying that that and i want to make this very very clear i'm saying that like what you want to be able to do like you can have those wants and desires But that doesn't mean that everyone has the same ability to do supernatural. I want to walk on water. That doesn't mean I can do that. But that doesn't mean that I haven't been given free will um, to do X, Y, or Z. To your definition of free will, you, is it of, of simpliciter, simpliciter? So are you defining free will simpliciter as having the ability to do what you want? No, no, uh, not the ability to do whatever you want, because I'm sure some people want to be God and they can't be. Right. Okay. I'm saying that we have the free will to make choices, the free will to make choices. So the choices to do um, certain things. Okay, so as long as you make, can make choices, you're free. Uh, well, not necessarily because I'm sure slaves were able to make certain choices. Like if they put on a certain, certain clothes or something, they weren't free. So right. just because you can make certain choices doesn't necessarily mean you're free. Look, I just don't know what you mean by this thing called free will because everything depends on Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So the, the ability, what I mean by free will is to do stuff that's outside of God's laws or regulations so what i mean by that is that if we could only do like a like a robot so this is what i mean a robot can only do something right uh, or let me put it this way if god were to say if god were to make us and we couldn't do any evil we could only do good we could only do um we could only follow god's rules right okay then then that would not have free will but to say that we can disobey God's rules, we have the free will to disobey those rules, but we don't have the free will to become God ourselves or the free will to, to, and again, we can fly, but I think you were talking about like fly like Superman or, or something like that. Um, that, that still doesn't mean that you don't have. Giving a definition. Have, are you giving a definition of human free will? Or are you giving a definition of free will simpliciter? Right. So free will is never mentioned a single time in the Bible. So so it, it, it's just kind of a human uh, term that 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 um, we have used to describe something that is taught in the Bible. It may not be a perfect word to describe what's taught because it's technically not true, complete free will as in the way I defined it. But we do have um, the free will to do evil, which if we didn't have that free will, God would not be good to allow that. Okay, wait. Can you have free will, simpliciter, and only be able to choose from good options? Can I have free will and only choose to do good? Can something, anything, have free will and only have the set of options that are good? Um, I mean, free will, To how would you define free will then? How... Well, I'm a compatibilist. You're not going to like my definition of free will. But this is, you're appealing to free will. I'm not. Right? No, no, no. I, so, um, well, anyway, just go ahead. Just go ahead. Like, for instance, do you think that you have free will in heaven? Um, the, you know, something that's kind of interesting. I don't know a lot about heaven because it's not talked about exactly how it's going to be up there. So... Everything I would say is just speculation. Is there evil after the day of judgment? 
and after I go to hell and you go to heaven, um, do you think that there could be evil in heaven after that point? Um, no, because we will have made the choice to become a new creation. Perfect. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, are you a robot at that point? Where after the day of judgment and God pats you on the back and, you know, you ran the race, whatever he does, high five. Um, he puts you, you go through the pearly grates. Do you, do you suddenly become a robot? Yeah. So, again, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't know, nor does anyone know exactly what heaven's going to be like. Okay. So Even if, like, you. God's going to turn you into a robot in heaven. That's possible. Um, is it possible? I, anything's possible, but is it reasonable or is it, is it said that that's what's going to happen? No. So I'm saying I don't know okay. necessarily how it, how it all works. Cause Jesus was, Jesus of Nazareth was asked a tricky question like, oh, um, and then these Sadducees were going over these different rules. Like it says that if, if a, um, if a husband and wife are married and, and the husband dies, she's to marry the brother. Uh, it was something like that. It was, it was talking about Israelites where God wanted to keep like his people separate. Anyway, totally different discussion, right? But whenever they're asking, like, if she married all seven brothers and they all die and they have no children, whose husband will she be in heaven? And Jesus responded with, it's because you don't understand the power of God or the scriptures that you ask that question. And so it's because you don't understand... Um, okay. and this is not a knock on you. I would say that with, if, if you don't understand the scriptures or the power of God, it would lead you to ask, huh, I can't physically understand how something is possible. Like I eat the Trinity that's up there. So therefore, because I can't understand it myself means that it can't, it can't happen. Look, yeah, let me just get to the argument. I've been, the point of these questions was to get at this. You believe it's either that. Heaven can, there can be evil in heaven or there can't. Seems like you're saying there can't be evil in heaven after the day of judgment. So if there can't be evil in heaven, right, then if you think it's possible that there's free will in heaven, then it's possible to have free will and only be able to do the good. Which means that your concept of free will is not tied to the ability to do evil, which means that God could create creatures like you and I with a type of free will where we can only choose the good and us not be robots. That's possible. And that is the argument that I'm giving. Yeah. So no, that's, that's definitely not the, the argument I was, I was making. So the argument I was making was the argument I was that- making. Right, right. But, but you said, um, okay, but that's not what, but that's not what I, I said or what I, what I implied, what, what my problem. So there's right. right, So there's only three options here right now about we either can only do what God says to do again, God would be a tyrant. The other option is God could allow us to do what we want, give us free will, heaven? give us free will and not punish us. But then God would not be just in doing so. And thankfully, he, he will punish those who have done like really wrong stuff. Uh, I deserve it myself, but thankfully, uh, he loves me and he died for me. And wait, then the wait, third wait. one is that we can do if the free will and him punish that. If you found out that God makes it such that you could only choose to do the good in heaven, is God suddenly a tyrant? Um, if you were to ask me that, I would say no, because that's what I'm choosing. I would actually want to no longer have the ability to do evil, to no longer have the ability to do what makes me happy or to follow my own desires. So I would actually be pleased with that. Okay, so then if God makes us in a way where we can only choose to follow him and obey his commands, right? And not do evil. Then by your law, but by what you just said here, he's not. Right, but, but that was my choice. But I'm saying that I have the choice to make that decision or not. You had, did you choose to be able to have the choice to do evil? 
Do you choose that? Yeah. So what I'm saying is that I did not choose to have free will. I've been given free will to have the choice about uh, to do evil or uh, to follow God. So I'm saying that, and maybe, maybe I. Um, okay, I'll just I'll can I'll continue listening. Okay. the The point is, is that. God has an option here. And keep in mind that he hates sin. Okay? He doesn't like sin. Okay? He has an option. Oh, I can create you with free will in a way where anything that you will is going to align with my commands, my nature, the good. Okay? God could do that. Or God could decide, look, I can create you with this other type of free will where not only can you choose to obey me, but you can also choose to disobey me and choose to sin. Now, given that God hates sin and disobedience, he doesn't have to give up giving you free will in order to make it such that you can only choose to obey him. Because, you, as you said, God would, number one, not be a tyrant in heaven where he allows you to make choices that are totally in line with the good, and you could still have free will given that you think it's possible for us to have free will and not be robots while being in heaven. Um, okay. All right. How about this? Why don't you give the last word and I'm going to go on to the next person. All right. Actually. Uh, oh, okay. That's fine. Um, so I think that we started this debate with, with me asking, um, I literally had, have it wrote down when I asked, uh, you said that God does not exist. And I asked, how did you come to that conclusion? And I had been waiting for any, any reasoning or evidence to conclude that God does not exist. And I said that it's a logical fallacy to say that there, to use a lack of evidence, uh, to say that it's proof that something does not exist. And I also asked, how can you use the natural to disprove the supernatural? Those are the first two questions I asked. And I had been waiting on any evidence to say that God does not exist and there has not been any evidence that that has been given or any response that has been given to say that God does not exist from this entire conversation. Um, so I will conclude with hopefully we'll be able to talk at some point in the future. Um, would you be interested in sure. us following each other and, and yeah. doing some FaceTimes at some point? Yeah, and, and I literally, and yeah. I hope I've been completely respectful. Um, I, I hope I've been, I know that at first, like it got a little, little shaky there, but, but genuinely like, um, this, this is, this was mild stuff. Why? My phone is ridiculous but if you follow me recently i'll scroll for you and i add you I, you're definitely okay yeah I, I just followed you yeah because i i'm looking at my phone it says i have 180 viewers i don't know that it's been that like that for the past hour i have there could be 10 people watching i have no clue and i and i can't see any i can't see these comments on my phone either i have to look at another <laughs> so my phone is frozen um so i can't follow you but um yeah no you're don't worry no i'm glad you requested i'm glad we had the conversation i appreciate you coming on um till next time then all right yeah yeah i appreciate it man okay bye john see ya